Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Kat Fleece from Central New Mexico Community College, continuing here with the female reproductive system. And in video C, we're going to focus on the development of the follicles in the ovaries. So what is really a follicle? Well, follicles, first of, of all, we find in the ovaries. And they're the structures that contain the eggs. Now, we're not going to be calling them eggs so much anymore. We're going to be referring to them as oocytes. And depending on what phase of meiosis they're in, we may be referring to them as primary oocytes, secondary oocytes. Now, these oocytes, as we see here, this is our oocyte, they're surrounded by all kinds of epithelial-like cells, and those we refer to as granulosa cells. Those granulosa cells are primarily responsible for the production of estrogen. Now, when we're born as females, we tend to have one or a couple of million of oocytes inside of a follicle. But by the time we reach puberty and all of these oocytes have by now been sitting around for 10 years, 12 years, 14 years, half if not more of them die off and we end up with only, you know, 400,000, 500,000 follicles at puberty. And they will continue to decline in number for obvious reasons because these follicles and their oocytes are going to um, go through maturation stages to where one of the oocytes will be ovulated. And in addition to that, many of these follicles will never have a chance to mature and just get old and become inviable. As a matter of fact, what is menopause Menopause refers to that phase of a female's life when she is not producing sufficient levels of estrogen anymore produced by oocytes because there aren't any real viable oocytes left anymore. Most of our follicles are going to be occurring as primordial follicles. So at birth, or definitely at the time of puberty, all of our follicles are primordial follicles, except for a few that begin the maturation process. So every month, a few lucky follicles begin to mature, and uh, ultimately, only one of all of those is going to participate in ovulation. So the smallest of the follicles here are shown under number one in our ovary. And we will discuss each one of these follicles in more depth in just a moment. By the way, this right here is our uterus with the fallopian tube and its fimbri right here. In two then, we see follicles that are beginning to mature more. Um, and we're going to be referring to them as first primary and then secondary follicles. Ultimately, we reach a phase called the tertiary or graphian follicle, as I often like to call it. And that is the lucky follicle. That's the follicle that can actually start, that participates in ovulation, meaning it'll merge and break through the uh, wall of the ovary to release the oocyte with some of the granulosa cells. Some of the other granulosa cells stay behind. So this oocyte with some of its granulosa cells could or could not become fertilized in the fallopian tube. Like I said, some of the granulosa cells do stay behind and they continue to divide and divide and create a very big gland inside of the ovary. So these, this picture does not um, really realistically show how big it can become. It can take up a, almost a whole uh, 
ovary or almost the whole ovary size. This corpus luteum produces various hormones that help prepare the uterus in case pregnancy does occur. We'll talk more about that in just a little while. It is referred to as the corpus luteum, literally meaning the yellow body because it kind of has a yellowish look to it. If fertilization does not occur, there is no need for this corpus luteum to continue producing its hormones and it starts to deteriorate and becomes more of a uh, scar tissue that we refer to as the corpus albicans. So we go from primordial follicles to primary, secondary, tertiary, which is the follicle that contains a secondary oocyte, which can be released from the ovary by means of a process of ovulation. The granulosa cells that stay behind in the ovary become part of a big gland called the corpus luteum, which eventually, if pregnancy does not occur, does not occur, turns into scar tissue referred to as the corpus albicans. So let's now visit each one of the follicle stages in a little bit more detail. So as I mentioned earlier, most of our follicles are going to remain in the primordial follicle stage. And what does that look like? Well, for one, they're very small and they surround, or, or I'm sorry, they contain an oocyte, which is referred to as the primary oocyte. And we'll learn in the next video why we have primary and secondary oocytes. This is the nucleus of the oocyte. Here we see the cytoplasm of the oocyte. And notice that flat nuclei of cells surround the oocytes. Those are flat granulosa cells. These granulosa cells will start to grow and eventually even divide, which then leads us to the next stages of our follicles. Notice on this slide here that our granulosa cells look much more cuboidal-like. And that tells us that we're looking at a primary follicle. We also have formed what is referred to as the zona pellucida, which is this layer here that separates the oocyte from the, gro the zona gran granulosa cells. And this contains all kinds of enzymes that are going to assist the sperm cells to penetrate the oocyte. When we begin to see multiple layers of more cuboidal-like granulosa cells, and we begin to see a space that forms in between our oocyte with its zona pellucida and the granulosa cells, that is indicative of a secondary follicle. We refer to that space as the antrum, and it's filled with fluid. Outside of the granulosa cells, so-called theca cells form, and they are very vascularized. So that secondary follicle is going to continue growing. Notice that we have more and more granulosa cells, and they begin to organize themselves to where they can create a bit of a stalk on top of which sits the oocytes. And then we still see some granulosa cells surrounding the oocyte. And so that stalk with the oocyte sort of penetrates into the antrum. This is a very characteristic look for a tertiary follicle, which I most often refer to as a graphion follicle. So here again, we see a graphion follicle. Maybe the stalk is not as pronounced um, in this particular image, but we see our oocyte with the granulosa cells surrounding the oocyte. And this whitish layer here is the zona pellucida, which this picture refers to as the zona striata, striata pretty much uh, the same thing.
now that we have an abundancy of granulosa cells, they start to crank out estrogens. And what stimulates the growth of our follicles is primarily follicle-stimulating hormone produced by the anterior pituitary, while another hormone produced by the anterior pituitary called the um, luteinizing hormone is going to stimulate the theca cells. Remember, these are the theca cells that surround our follicles to produce androgens, and these androgens can actually be converted into estrogens. So lots of estrogen production at this point in time. By the time the tertiary follicle stage or the graphene follicle stage is reached, the oocyte is now a secondary oocyte and is ready to be released from the ovary by means of the process called ovulation. During this process, we see that the secondary oocyte leaves the ovary and is hopefully captured by the fimbri of the um, fallopian tubes. And some of the granulosa cells go along. Clearly, the zona pellucida is still surrounding the oocyte. But many, many of the granulosa cells stay behind. They're going to continue dividing and form the corpus luteum. By the way, only one of all the follicles that begin the maturation process will typically go through ovulation. It's rare that we will see multiple follicles go through this process. And so we can, we can state that 99% of our follicles actually undergo atresia, which is a fancy way of saying that they literally die off. So we form the corpus luteum primarily by the granulosa cells that stay behind and divide. Uh, even the theca cells are going to contribute to the formation of the corpus luteum. As I mentioned earlier, that corpus luteum can get very big. And as you can see in this picture, this is the whole ovary. And notice that the corpus luteum takes up almost the whole um, space of the ovary. So this wraps up our discussion on folliculogenesis.